Hello everyone and welcome to this introduction to English at Leicester. I'm Ben Parsons, just to introduce myself a bit. I'm the Director of Admissions for the School of Arts as a whole, but I'm based in English and I teach across the curriculum as well. Uh, most importantly though, I am the sort of main uh, sort of go-to point for any questions or queries you might have about the degrees or about entry requirements or any of the kind of technicalities of teaching. Um, please do make use of my email address you can see on the screen there if you do have any questions or need me to expand on anything uh, that I touch on in the course of this talk. So I'm going to start off with this slide which is just a few kind of facts and figures and stats about Leicester itself as an institution. Um, so we consistently rank in the top 25 of best UK universities. Uh, Leicester is itself the third most affordable city in the UK, according to NatWest. Again, these are not sort of small issues at all. One uh, in particular is kind of very important if you're spending three years in a particular in a particular place. Um, we rank very highly in terms of employability. So the institutional figure is 94 percent. And what that means is that uh, 94% of our graduates are within full-time work or full-time education uh, within six months of graduation. Now, the figure for English is actually slightly higher than that, and this isn't a coincidence, I'll say. It's something that we're kind of very sensitive to and something we've worked very hard to put right at the centre of our degree to make sure that we're not just teaching kind of academic skills, but marketable skills, skills that will actually be useful in the kind of workplace. And as you'll see, this is a kind of a constant thread that runs through the degrees that we offer. We also uh, rank very highly in terms of sustainability too, and have a top 20 students union. And in fact, our students union building, the Percy Gee building has recently been uh, completely refurbed and rebuilt. So it's very kind of spick and span and kind of space age. Moving on now to thinking about English at Leicester, um, what I'll do is I'll break down this talk into a few kind of subsections to give you an idea of the general kind of skeleton and structure I'll be following. So I'm going to start off by talking a bit about the English department as a whole, so the English team, who we are, sort of what our philosophy is, uh, our kind of makeup as a department, uh, before turning to the kind of very important and essential question of what will you be studying. So I'll take you through the degrees we offer, sort of bit by bit, and most importantly, sort of show you how all those components fit together and how sort of what you'll be studying at one point in the degree will equip you for your studies later on in the course of the degree. Uh, I'm going to say most about year one, uh, kind of introductory year, um, because obviously that'll be kind of the first year by definition uh, that you'll be joining us in. But also uh, to give you a sense of how, as I say, the degree is kind of holistic, how it kind of has this kind of preparatory element that then you put to work in the following uh, years of the degree. I'll say a bit about our teaching methodologies, our assessment, um, talking about how you'll be studying the degree, what will be kind of required of you as you move through your three or four years with us before talking on uh, moving on to how you can apply. So uh, to go back to the top of that list, here's a bit of information about English at Leicester itself, who we are and um, and how that kind of is likely to colour and affect your kind of experience studying with us. So our department is a, a relatively large one. It consists of 20 full time research active academics. And we all represent kind of multiple uh, specialisms, multiple different kind of uh, niches and corners of English. And what this means, I mean, I want to stress the idea of the fact that we are research active, that we are ourselves students in a sense, every bit as much as we are academics. So we are not only the people who are kind of advancing the fields in which you'll be uh, taught, which you'll be learning about as you attend seminars and lectures, we're the very figures that are publishing kind of collections of essays and monographs and uh, journal articles about the particular things that we are uh, relaying information about in the teaching sessions. But it also means that we are kind of collaborators with you, that we are also aware of what it's like to kind of learn, because we are still learning ourselves. We're still kind of investigating and researching and writing kind of very actively. And that feeds into kind of our approach to our students. We don't see it as a kind of hierarchical approach where there's this clear divide between students and academic. We see ourselves as being participants in a single uh, academic community.
and a very vibrant community it is as well. There are various sort of points you'll encounter where you kind of kind of you can kind of associate with um, your uh, your tutors, your lecturers in a sort of quasi social setting. You know, we, we regard ourselves as being kind of all interested and united by our sort of fascination with written culture. And we are kind of investigators of that no less than you are. Um, we do very well in terms of our research as well. So there's this kind of um, national audit that takes place on a seven yearly basis. And the last one was 2014. And in that audit, uh, we rank well, 70 percent of our publications were found to be world leading or international in status. So we are kind of quite heavy hitters as researchers. And that feeds into what we teach, what we make available to teach. The fact that we're all sort of. Uh, working in our own little areas means that we bring that kind of richness, that breadth of knowledge to the uh, to the curriculum of our degrees and allows you to kind of investigate a lot of different areas that you might not necessarily encounter in sort of other sort of slightly narrower degrees offered at our competitor institutions. But also the fact that there are 20 of us is another thing that is, is really important and worth stressing. What that means is that we can offer a real kind of strong support to students, uh, that we're able to um, to make sure that students feel kind of confident and not kind of faces in the crowd, not kind of anonymous parts of a kind of massive student body, but to ensure that we know who our students are, that we give them kind of adequate support as they make their way through their studies with us, and that we are kind of there to sort of encourage and guide and sort of offer what assistance we can as and when it's needed. So it all boils down then to three kind of principal things really. So as I say, the fact that we all work on our own different areas means we can offer kind of almost unrivaled coverage of English as a discipline. The fact we can offer really kind of great, close, customized support to our students as they move through the degree. And the fact that we offer choice above all else. This, you know, the, the, the expansive coverage we offer enables students to kind of carve their own pathways through the degree. And the greatest of these is choice. And that's really what I'm kind of going to say most about at this uh, part of the talk. So this is something that our students kind of respond to and recognize very widely. So another kind of national audit is the, uh, the National Student Survey. This is uh, from the latest kind of uh, published set of comments from students and students find this degree to be one that does enable them to kind of really arrange and organize their studies around their existing interests or allows them to develop and locate brand new interests along the way. Uh, as these two students have, have noted, these are again are, are graduates, the graduation in 2020. Um, the variety and the range of topics uh, was, was something that was kind of really noteworthy about the degree they took. It, and the fact that this allows students to kind of find their own voices, find their own pathway as they move through the degree. This will hopefully be, will become something that becomes apparent when I talk about years two and three later on. And the other student appreciated the range of content covered, but also the fact that the lecturers were there to kind of guide them through that content as well, make sure that they were making kind of informed choices rather than leaping into the dark. So this idea of choice uh, underpins even the degrees that we offer. So we offer a range of different BAs uh, in English. The most popular degree, as you might imagine, is the sort of uh, straight BA English, which you can study for three or four years. That's with a year abroad kind of inserted between uh, years uh, two and three. And the third year then becomes the kind of final or fourth year. As I say, it's the most popular degree we offer, and it's one that does really kind of uh, allow you to range over the sort of uh, the the full range of English. Um, if you want to kind of have a kind of slightly more specialised experience, if you're kind of interested in a sort of particular area of the degree, then we also offer uh, English with other subjects as well, other kind of neighbouring disciplines. So you can study English and history or English and American studies. And both of those degrees are split 50-50 between the two disciplines. So you spend half your time and half of your marks will be based on your performance in English and in history. And the same with American studies as well. So it's split very evenly between those two disciplines, as I say. Um, we also offer English and film studies or a language as well um, with our partners in modern languages. And the languages in question 
are French, Spanish and Italian. And again, those degrees are also split half and half. So it's exactly down the middle. You spend half of your time, half of your modules, half of your study, half of your reading, half of your assessment will be based in one area and half will be based on the other. There's a bit of kind of wriggle room in sort of later years, um, but still it is kind of required that you do um, continue to sort of uh, recognise that balance in your studies. So if you do want to study English with one of these neighbouring areas, which kind of takes you into studying an international language or looking at the kind of historical background of, uh, of human culture kind of more intensively, then these are kind of degrees uh, that may appeal to you. We also offer a BA English with creative writing, which is a kind of slightly different in terms of its weighting. So this is a not a 50-50 split, it's a 75-25 split. So you spend um, three quarters of your time and your energy uh, studying English and uh, the remaining quarter, the creative writing side. And that kind of pattern plays out throughout the entirety of your degree. I should point out, if you do want to study the sort of straight up BA English, this also puts at your disposal options in American studies and options in creative writing as well. So it's not the case that you kind of rule out any contact with those areas if you choose the BA English degree. It means instead you're kind of not committed to sort of studying those areas as a kind of main obligatory thread running through the degree. You can just kind of dip your toe into them as and when you like kind of experiment with them um, at various points so the choices are there to kind of take up these areas even on the kind of straightforward english degree the english degree does not kind of close off your options um, but if you do on the other hand wish to kind of specialize and make those areas a sort of formal part of your studies then the sort of joint honors degrees in the various permutations are perhaps the ones that you should think about applying for So I'm going to take you through now the first year of the English degree and give you a sense of what it entails and kind of what you're likely to sort of find yourself studying there. And as I say, this is a kind of should become obvious just how this works as a kind of launch pad year that equips you with some basic ideas that you can then put to work in the remaining two years. And in fact, that is the entire sort of functional purpose of the first year and how we've approached it in terms of formulating it. It very much kind of uh, is designed to introduce you to fundamental skills. And for those of you who are kind of returning to education after a break, the whole point is to kind of ensure that everybody enters the second and third years with the same skills in the bag. They all, every, every one of our students has the sort of same toolkit of sort of basic methodologies and ideas. And to ensure above all, that all of our students are kind of confident using those methodologies. So to kind of reintroduce people who, again, perhaps have been out of education for a little time, uh, back into the kind of requirements of higher education um, in a sort of gentle and uh, sort of supportive way. Um, but the whole point is that it does lay the foundations for your degree. So this is a, this is a kind of uh, this is a kind of preparatory year, the first year, which is all about sort of introducing you to the kind of basic sort of food groups of what's required in studying different types of English. So one of the first modules you'll encounter is one called Writing Matters. Um, and this is a module that's entirely kind of focused on academic writing. So ensuring that you're both kind of proficient as a writer, and as I say earlier, kind of confident as a writer too. To, and introducing you to the, the skills of analysis and uh, research that also kind of inform and underpin academic writing as well. Um, it's a module, as I said, that is very much focused on the kind of practicalities of producing assessment at a kind of university level of, of uh, competency. Um, it's kind of typical in the way that it's taught in that the teaching sessions are split between lectures and seminars. So the lectures are focused on particular topics. So in this particular module, each lecture will deal with a particular facet of writing, looking at style or grammar or organization or expression, or one of the kind of, as I say, kind of basic sort of um, elements of the sort of writing process. 
introducing you to those topics, kind of running through some sort of basic information about it in a kind of digestible uh, sort of form. But these are balanced against seminars and seminars, as I hope you'll kind of see uh, as I run through the rest of this talk, are really where we see the most of the work being done. So seminars are kind of smaller group discussions, typically involving a dozen or fewer students. They can run for an hour or in the second and third year modules for two hours in which they're a lot more dynamic, there's a lot more focus on kind of conversation and debate and active learning in concert with your peers and with your tutor. And you may be given sort of preparatory exercises to do for the seminar. So you're kind of equipped with sort of material to help you play a role in the discussion that follows. But the whole idea is on kind of discussion, on debate, on sort of thrashing out kind of ideas, refining your own responses and ideas in response to uh, your your peers and uh, your tutor and usually the seminars will be paired to the lectures as they are here so the topic that's dealt with in the lecture will inform the sort of discussion in the seminar as well the two sort of work in binary with one another in terms of the other sort of area that we are using this particular module and in some other modules kind of later on as well, because this is a first semester, first year module, we've introduced uh, another teaching style called the Autonomous Learning Group, which is a bit of a mouthful, which is why we tend to uh, abbreviate it to ALG. But an Autonomous Learning Group is, in essence, a kind of small, unsupervised discussion group. So you are called to meet with your kind of fellow class members but without the kind of supervision of your tutor to do some kind of preparatory work and discussion ahead of the seminar itself to kind of pave your way into the seminar. And we find this is kind of very effective way of introducing you to fellow English students, getting you to, to sort of engage with and even just basically meet other English students in a sort of, you know, structured setting. But also getting you used to using and seeing fellow English students as a kind of resource that you can kind of use as a way to kind of refine and bounce off your sort of own ideas as well as a way of, of sort of fine tuning and developing and stretching your own thinking. As I say, there's a lot of focus on seminar, a lot of focus on seminar learning, on learning as a group within a group through kind of discussion and debate and activity. And the autonomous learning group gives you a way to kind of find your feet in that context without the kind of supervision of a tutor as well, as well as having that social sort of element of introducing you to fellow English students um, and ensuring that you kind of do know one another sort of very early on. In terms of assessment, so writing matters because it is focused on the kind of practicalities of writing and it wants to get you kind of experimenting with kind of techniques and trying out new things. Uh, the assessment is based on a series of short exercises that you produce throughout the semester. So the whole point of this module is not that you will kind of do nothing but read and talk and write notes and then suddenly have this burst of activity at the end of the semester when the assessment's needed. The whole point is to get you writing kind of early, writing often, getting used to writing, kind of training, kind of boot camping you in writing and its kind of practicalities. And so you'll be given the series of exercises rather than one big chunk of assessment at the end that you'll be asked to complete throughout the module to get you kind of scribbling away sort of almost as soon as you're kind of through the gates at university. And each of those assessments will again focus on a particular aspect of writing, getting to exercise and put to work the skills that you're learning about and discussing in the lectures and the seminars. And the way the assessment is going to work is that only your sort of highest graded uh, papers will go forward as your final work, uh, final marks uh, for the module. And we've again done this in order to encourage you to experiment, to make you aware that actually, you know, to give you some kind of freedom to experiment without it feeling like you're putting all your eggs in one basket, that you either kind of stand or fall uh, on a particular piece of assessment. Here, you are, you are given kind of freedom to try things out and if it doesn't work out, it's not going to kind of impact your marks negatively. It is basically a kind of safety net where you're able to kind of play with and experiment with these kind of new ideas without fear of kind of negative consequences in terms of the mark uh, that you'll receive at the end. So again, it's all about not only sort of uh, introducing you to kind of writing skills, but getting you kind of confident as a writer and hopefully the assessment, that kind of sandbox 
that's kind of built into uh, the way the assessment works would allow you to kind of play with these ideas without feeling that everything is kind of riding on your performance in any one piece of paper. Alongside uh, writing matters, you'll also be studying a module called the novel around the world. And on the one hand, this is the sort of uh, literary counterpoint to writing matters. As you're learning about writing, you're also reading other people's writing. And it's also getting you to kind of um, understand how to analyse prose, kind of sustained long pieces of prose as represented by the novel as a form. In some ways, it's a kind of review module that sort of takes you through the kind of history or development of the novel from its kind of rise to dominance in the early Victorian period through to the present day. So it traces you through um, the early 19th century to the 21st century from Charlotte Bronte's Jane Eyre at one end through to Zadie Smith's N.W. at the other. On the other, though, it's also a kind of uh, geographic uh, module as well as a historical one. In as its name suggests, it's not just about thinking about the novel as it's kind of uh, developed through time, but also how it's become a kind of globalised property, how the English novel is no longer kind of confined to writers in England, how the novel has kind of internationalised and even how writers from around the world have sort of used the English novel as a way of answering back to English culture, to kind of imperialism and colonialism, taking up this kind of English form and using it as a vehicle for their own kind of points and comments about the sort of the state of the world. So it will introduce you to a range of, kind of international voices as well as historical voices as you move through the reading list. And the way this works then, so quite often you can see the kind of novels themselves being kind of dialogue with each other. So um, the earliest novel you'll read is Jane Eyre, the kind of classic um, sort of gothic, not quite gothic um, novel uh, written in the kind of 1840s by uh, Charlotte Bronte under the pseudonym Curra Bell. But you'll be looking at this alongside Jean Rees's White Sargasso Sea, which is very much a kind of Caribbean response to Jane Eyre, even a kind of prequel to it, which takes up Jane Eyre's characters and looks at their kind of the unspoken kind of margins of Jane Eyre, looks at their kind of careers abroad and and sort of dramatizes that in really kind of vivid style. You'll also be looking at E.M. Forster's A Passage to India, very much a kind of anti-colonial novel in its own right, but written from a kind of squarely English position. And we'll be looking at that alongside Indira Sinha's uh, Animals People, which take, is, is written uh, or narrated rather by a figure at the very sort of uh, bleakest sort of receiving end of global capitalism, a kind of victim, a casualty of uh, global capitalism and its kind of recklessness with, recklessness with human lives. And again, you can sort of see how these two voices are kind of pitted against one another, how they are sort of work in dialogue with one another, how Sinha kind of picks up on kind of themes and strands in Forster and sort of bounces them back, propels them back. We're also looking at other uh, voices as well. So the great American novelist James Baldwin's Giovanni's Room, a kind of pioneering work of gay black fiction written, I think, when homosexuality was still illegal in most of the Western world, but still very kind of frank in its expression of desire. So another kind of voice added to this mix, the, the looking at the different the different meanings that the novel has come to kind of express and voice. Semester two, uh, your modules will turn to more of the major food groups of English. So one of the modules you'll take will be reading English and having studied prose in the novel and writing skills in writing matters, your attention will now turn towards poetry. So this is a, a module that focuses entirely on uh, poetic diction and poetic technique. In fact, it's all about kind of unpicking what Ezra Pound calls that very special kind of type of language that poetry is, language charged to the utmost with meaning. It's really all about giving you the skills to take apart a poem, to explore the devices and recognise the techniques it's using, some of which are kind of much more subtle than simply just the words on the page or the choice of language uh, that a poet uses. 
So it's really, again, designed to kind of complement your uh, growing confidence as an, anal an analyst of uh, prose and as a writer and researcher at academic level by giving you a real kind of insight into how to tackle a poem, how to grapple with poetic language, how to identify what's going on, all the mechanics and the... Um, and the whirring cogs and the organs and the bits and pieces, how to kind of spot those and comment kind of intelligently on them and reflect on their functions and effects. And it continues um, that same pattern that you found in the novel of introducing you to a wide range of different voices as well. You will encounter canonical authors like Shakespeare on reading English and studying the sonnets and working out how exactly the sonnet structure has been exploited by Shakespeare in order to kind of frame and, um, and complicate the meanings he expresses. But you'll also encounter a much earlier kind of overlooked texts as well, such as riddles from the Exeter book um, written in Old English over a thousand years ago, as well as kind of more contemporary voices uh, like Audre Lord, uh, snippet there from her Echoes, um, so it really is a very wide ranging module, given that it's about the focus is on technique rather than any kind of particular period, any particular kind of phase or movement of writing. It ranges very freely over the full extent of the of literature in English, looking back to its kind of earliest uh, emerging uh, texts through to um, the present day and touching on canonical figures and more marginal kind of fugitive writers, too. And it you know, leads you through all of those kind of different aspects of poetry. So it's very much kind of structured on those elements and aspects. So to give you a kind of overview of the themes of the lectures, so you have fine lectures uh, talking about form, about how the kind of physical form or structure of a poem conditions or creates meaning within it, or rhyme and meter, how the patterns of sound in a poem, um, again, kind of convey meanings of their own. Uh, beyond the literal sense of the words that they frame and again making you kind of confident in talking about these things and spotting them and, and working out how they kind of function in a piece of text and tone as well so the attitude a poem uh, conveys irony how to kind of uh, sort of uh, deal with a text that may not be uh, driving you towards the meaning that it's expressly articulating so it's again a very kind of thematically uh, organized points. Alongside uh, reading English you'll be turning your attention to theatre as well in and particularly the theatre of the late 16th and early 17th century in Renaissance drama. This is a module that not only thinks about theatre but also asks you to kind of uh, get to grips with the culture of a, a particular historical period in that kind of very fractious time uh, around the sort of uh, tail end of Elizabeth I's reign into the reign of James I and Charles I. So the theatre of the Elizabethan and Jacobean period. Um, it's again asking you to think about uh, a particular type of text and, and to develop the skills you need to kind of talk about that type of text effectively and intelligently, in this case as I say, kind of theatre, how exactly to kind of write about plays, um, but also opens up a kind of more cultural historical kind of aspect asking you to think about the plays in terms of their context kind of you know the the underlying forces uh, that uh, the cultural uh, movements that gave them the shape that they have but it doesn't neglect the dramatic aspect of drama itself so it's not asking you to think about the text as kind of like deep frozen bits of writing but to think about drama as something that is there to be performed that is brought to life in that kind of ever mutable space of the stage so rather than being kind of a fixed text something is there to be kind of performed and staged and enacted so in fact this is built into the assessment scheme the first assignment you'll uh, undertake for this module is a review of a contemporary production which obviously and asks you to think about how effective um, a particular uh, film version or tv version or stage version of a text has been um, in sort of realizing the potential of the written word again thinking about how exactly you square the kind of performative elements of the of a dramatic text with its written aspects
And alongside uh, those four modules I've just run through, uh, you'll also have the opportunity in the first year to uh, take up a number of optional modules in order to kind of expand your knowledge and skills further still and to sort of push your degree into the areas in which you're most interested. So this is a kind of ever changing menu, but uh, here's a kind of a snapshot of a couple of uh, modules that will be available to you. So creative writing. So even if you don't take uh, creative writing as a formal element of your degree, you still have the ability to take a couple of modules in it, as I mentioned earlier. So uh, in the first year, you have the option to take introduction to writing creatively, uh, part one and part two. Um, you also have the ability to take modules in American literature, so classic US texts, modern American writing. If these are areas that you kind of want to explore or areas you're already interested in, that you want to kind of develop those interests further, then uh, you have the freedom uh, to do that. Um, of course, if you're already doing uh, a degree which is English with or and another discipline, then obviously uh, those option slots will already be kind of filled up for you according to which other uh, discipline uh, you're studying alongside English. Since creative writing um, is one that students quite often find themselves kind of interested in, at least if only casually, then I'll run through quickly what's involved in the introduction to writing creatively. There's T.S. Eliot frowning at you from uh, beside his uh, his typewriter. So again, it's um, a very kind of dynamic uh, sort of module. A lot of the work is kind of done in the seminars. So you attend lectures, but the seminars are more kind of like workshops where you bring along your own work and you talk about it uh, together in a kind of supportive environment with your fellow students and with your tutor. You also will have uh, again kind of quite focused workshops uh, hosted by guest speakers that are brought in so professional writers uh, of various uh, capacities that are brought in to uh, to discuss their work and uh, and to sort of shed lights on different aspects of the the kind of authorship process and it covers a whole kind of uh, wide range of different types of writing too, kind of dipping in and out of a wide variety of different forms so creative non-fiction so uh, in other words, uh, kind of biography, autobiography, um, poetry, uh, short prose fiction, as well as screenwriting as well. So it really does kind of give you a, a very broad uh, taste of a, a wide range of different types of writing. Um, and the idea is that you're kind of, again, much like writing matters, um, but in a kind of more sort of uh, freeform creative way, that you're producing your kind of own creative material throughout the semester. So constantly kind of writing pieces uh, ahead of seminars in order to kind of bring them along for discussion there. So you're, kind of, you're writing kind of often, you're writing kind of quite, and quite prolifically, and you end up building a, a, you know, a relatively uh, large portfolio of different pieces by the end of the module on which your assessment will be based. Again, this is what a kind of average, well, a more a sort of virtual timetable uh, for a student in year one will look like. So you can see here your time is divided between seminars and lectures. Typically, you will have one or two lectures on a module and one seminar every week. But you'll notice there are also kind of parallel events going on as well. So things like study skills workshops, which are kind of a very kind of logistical um, sort of uh, sort of uh, topics like how to use the library, how to avoid plagiarism, how to compile a bibliography. That's sort of very kind of practical thing. We also deliver those in a sort of workshop setting. So typically you'll find that you have a kind of baseline of about 10 hours contact time a week. You'll also find that gets kind of filled up with other more kind of movable things as well. So there's autonomous learning groups I mentioned earlier. There's meetings with personal tutors that I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, there's a whole range of different more kind of, I guess, occasional events that will sort of top up that 10 hours. And you may find that uh, the amount of contact time you have on campus um, every week in some weeks can be as high as 20 hours. The 10 hours is very much a kind of foundation or a sort of baseline. As I say, other events do take place on top of that. A 
Okay, so moving now into year two, this is the point of the degree when having been equipped with all the sort of, again, the kind of fundamental skills and methods, you know, building up a real sort of solid toolkit of different ideas and how to sort of take apart a novel, how to take apart a sonnet, how to engage with the formative aspects of uh, drama, how to write effectively and persuasively. In year two, having kind of acquired all this stuff, you can uh, then kind of put to work exploring the different avenues of literature that uh, most appeal to you. So this is in year two and from year two and year three. Um, this is where you can start to sort of organise the degree around your own interests and really kind of um, pursue your kind of own choices and options very far. So the modules in year two tend to kind of skew towards the earlier periods but not kind of exclusively as i'll show you in a minute so um if you want to have the degree be a kind of survey of the development of literature through time you're able to do that if you want the degree to be kind of focused fairly narrowly on a kind of particular area that you are interested in already then you can kind of structure it that way if you want the degree to be more exploratory and kind of pursue things that uh, you think you will like kind of new brand new stuff that you've never sort of encountered or read before then you can also do it that way however you can also kind of organize it to be kind of some kind of mixture or compromise between those three uh, different forms uh, so as I say year two the modules do tend to kind of skew towards um, kind of earlier periods allowing you to kind of engage with the sort of the, the development of English um, as it starts to kind of appear as a kind of national literature so from the Renaissance Renaissance literature being different from Renaissance drama in the first year but building on the knowledge you will have acquired there Renaissance literature looks more kind of poetry and prose so you will read things like uh, Thomas More's Utopia Milton's Paradise Lost rather than the drama Love Wars looks at that slightly kind of overlooked period um, after the um, restoration of Charles II up to the French Revolution, a, a period which sees some kind of odd quirks occurring, like the appearance of the first professional female writers like Aphra Ben and Eliza Haywood uh, for the stage kind of later on. Um, there's also the opportunity to explore romanticism, kind of the period slightly after 1789 into the uh, regency period um, and look at the period of kind of you know path-breaking romantic writers like Wordsworth and Coleridge uh, up to Byron and Shelley there's also the opportunity to take a more another kind of skills-based module called concepts and criticism which is basically all about what stuff we can borrow from other neighboring disciplines so what we can learn from psychology what we can learn from politics what we can learn from economics even um, in order to kind of understand the way that texts are put together in even more precision a lot of discussion there about kind of race and ethnicity and gender and how uh, we can sort of uh, use these different lenses to understand what's going on in the text and how that will color our interpretations of it also the opportunity to look at kind of chaucer and medieval culture as well I suppose as the hoary old cliche goes um, the father of English literature but of course we'll try and challenge that idea as much as uh, confirm it but alongside those modules also opportunity to sort of uh, explore a much wider menu of different options too so in the second year you also have the chance to have a look at these various different uh, sort of parts of the degree um, so exploring again the gothic if that's an area a movement in literature you're particularly interested in using stories another creative writing option uh, again sort of moving over the atlantic and looking at more american literature options uh, looking at charles dickens that kind of you know titanic figure in 19th century literature and in the development of the novel the popular novel in particular uh, looking very closely at his work and his world there's also a handful of other modules that I'll, I'll say a bit more about in even more depth. Uh, in fact, I'll highlight them. So teaching English to speakers of other languages, diversifying the publishing industry in English and education. Now, these are more vocational than academic. So they're focused on sort of particular areas in which uh, students will kind of take their degrees when they graduate. So two of them are focused on education, both education in the UK and internationally. So English and education 
comes with a placement at a local school. It really does kind of ground you in the realities of teaching in the 21st century. Teaching English to speakers of other languages actually has a kind of qualification built in at the end of it. So even as you're studying for the degree, you can obtain a qualification in teaching language overseas called the KELTA, the Cambridge English Language Teaching Award. Um, there's also the opportunity to explore the publishing industry in diversifying the publishing industry where you work again very closely with a small press and have a kind of e-placement there and all the assessment is kind of tied up uh, with your sort of participation uh, with that publisher so as i say these are more focused on sort of vocational uh, you know uses you can put your degree to after graduation rather than purely academic subjects moving in now to the Third year. So the third year sort of continues that almost kind of survey of uh, English literature and it gives you the chance to continue through the 19th century, um, looking at the Victorian period into the modern uh, period, by which we mean the modernist period. So the, the first half of the 20th century around the First World War. And then finally, the sort of the literature that's come after the Second World War, so 1945 up to the present day, and looking at all the kind of complex different movements um, that have uh, arisen after that point. And again, this is a very kind of uh, sort of cutting edge, up to date module. You'll be studying kind of very recently published work. It's constantly uh, updating its syllabus to reflect kind of new movements uh, that are even occurring now. There's also the opportunity to do dissertation. And the dissertation is very much a kind of like capstone of the kind of independent study that we encourage throughout the degree. So basically it's a project which is entirely yours. So you can either revisit a question or a text or a period that you've looked at in year two or even year one, or do something completely new. And you are appointed a supervisor, but the supervisor doesn't teach you. The supervisor is only there in a kind of advisory capacity to help you navigate kind of criticism, to help you kind of sharpen up uh, your central topic. But the topic is fundamentally yours. Here's a quick overview of some of the recent dissertation topics that students have looked at. Again, you can see this kind of huge different range of different topics that have been considered. And we try to sort of facilitate and help students to to do whatever they want really. So some of these are kind of relatively off the wall, um, some of them are relatively conventional. So we've got students looking at um, the witch as a kind of figure and the way that this has been kind of rewritten by feminist authors or other students looking at Old Norse literature and how the bear has kind of functioned within that, uh, in that kind of like folkloric um, sort of almost anthropological way. Uh, gothic literature and the way that it depicts the other. Um, it's also a chance to kind of look at some dusty, neglected corners of literature, like these forgotten plays of the First World War. Or even uh, a little bit further down the list, students have chosen to explore kind of science fiction, um, an area of literature that is often seen as being kind of non-literary and purely sort of popular. In fact, one student's even looking at the kind of Warhammer 40,000 mythos, which is more associated with uh, the world of games and tabletop gaming rather than uh, written text. But it's still a kind of narrative form and it's still open to analysis. As I say, we try to kind of accommodate whatever choices students wish to make with their dissertations and to allow them to go and explore whatever really kind of, you know, uh, lights the, the fire for them. Back to the third year and the other modules available. So there's also a, a huge range of different options here, which allow you to, again, kind of explore a, a real sort of broad range of literature, find your own sort of interests or build on the interests you already have. Again, revisit things that you've sort of seen in the second year or the first year, or kind of, you know, break new ground and, and, and look into something you're kind of in, really interested in. So there's the opportunity to look at um, modules on sort of genre fiction, like the, the, um, the evolution of detective fiction. So writers like Conan Doyle, Agatha Christie, up to the kind of present day. The opportunity to look at uh, the literature of the 1980s and the way that the kind of very febrile political climate of the 80s kind of impressed itself uh, on, on novels of the time and plays of the time as well to look at the way the Victorians thought about the dead and how they processed um, grieving and bereavement. 
also have the opportunity to look at Russian and French literature and the you know these very important novelists like Flaubert and Dostoevsky and in, encounter them and, and think about their particular sort of world and the way they work but yeah, that's not even really the limit there's a, a more more and more and more um, sort of opportunity the more you look at the third year so again kind of continue looking at the gothic and it's kind of late victorian manifestation um, so bram stoker and uh, robert louis stevenson for instance uh, the way the holocaust is re represented in literature again focusing perhaps on a specific figure if you're interested in looking at jane austen's novels in around the regency period um, the opportunity to again sort of uh, stretch into creative writing if that's what interests you uh, either sort of writing comedy or writing voices again kind of writing sort of monologue forms so it really is kind of a wide range of different things that you can think about and encounter and explore in your third year okay i'll move on to some of the practicalities now uh, and the ways in which you teach i mean I've, I've just got to touch on some of these areas as i've been through that overview um but there's a few points i want to kind of just reiterate and, ex and extend on so uh, teaching as i say involves a mixture of lectures and seminars principally but because it's a very kind of varied degree which contains a lot of different uh, material for you to sort of look at it we often we use a, a variety of different teaching uh, systems as well so you well I'd just as like to kind of find tutorials workshops again focusing on kind of very sort of uh, practical nuts and bolts stuff tutorials being kind of face-to-face -face meetings with the tutor the dissertation is entirely taught in that way you may find kind of introduced film screenings as well again as i say a kind of wide variety of teaching uh, styles to um to reflect the wide variety of different topics that we teach um we also offer meetings with personal tutors in fact that's worth kind of flagging up because that's one of the major uh, support systems we have in place so as soon as you enroll at leicester one of the first per people you meet in your welcome week will be your personal tutor an appointed go-to point of contact um, in the faculty who you can sort of consult with on a range of different topics uh, whether it be personal difficulties you're having or just wanting kind of more feedback or commentary on your development the personal tutor is there to kind of consult with and will will help you out to the best of their ability there's also peer study groups online catch-up sessions becoming increasingly popular as you might imagine in the current climate we're in um, all of these things are again sort of different ways in which we deliver our content so as i say to get, reiterate that figure you'll have a, a minimum of nine to ten hours of contact time each week and many weeks it will be substantially more than that in terms of assessment um, you may be relieved to hear that we tend not to use written exams anymore so the vast majority of modules are assessed by coursework and the coursework is also as, as varied as the uh, the teaching methods that we use so in order to be kind of tailored to the different topics that we're attempting to sort of assess you on the assessment styles will be kind of different so the essay is a kind of main um, form of assessment and the essay does kind of increase in size as you increase in confidence as you go through the degree so the first year essays are relatively short relatively brief you're given um, typically about 2,000 words in the third year that jumps up to sorry the second year that jumps up to 2,000 words and in the third year that jumps up to 5,000 words as the kind of default uh, size of the essay so the essays kind of say go from 2,000 to 3,000 to 5,000 as you work your way through the degree and are taking on those kind of extra skills it gives you a kind of bigger canvas to kind of play with um, as you're finding your feet as a kind of researcher and a writer um, but alongside essays there are also film and theatre reviews there are presentations uh, oral presentations delivered in seminars uh, there are group projects there are passage analyses there are online tests there are kind of exercises you can try out as a formative exercises so they're not kind of um, they don't contribute towards the uh, the mark for the module but they at least give you a sense of how you're developing uh, in terms of specific skills as i say examinations are a rarity they only appear in two modules and even those exams are not the single assessed component there is an exam and a piece of coursework and your mark for the module is split between the two and in fact one of the those exams is is, an, is in an optional third year module so you can avoid it completely 
Uh, saying a bit more about kind of a support system, because I appreciate that uh, many people uh, listening to this will be kind of returning to higher education, perhaps after a long break. I mentioned the personal tutor. Again, your kind of go to contact in English will be able to lead you and advise you through a variety of different uh, outcomes and a different sort of needs. Um, within that, though, however, we we do place a lot of emphasis on being kind of a supportive and uh, accessible and approachable as we can be. And these are kind of qualities that are constantly kind of flagged up in the national student survey as being things we're particularly good at, kind of listening to students. And again, it's something that we've really worked hard as a department to, um, to make as effective as possible. There's also the staff student committee, um, which meets twice a semester. Uh, basically every degree at every different level will elect a rep who sits on the committee and sort of takes the temperature of the student body ahead of the committee meetings to make sure that there are um, that what's raised at the committee fully reflects uh, what's going on um, in terms of the views that are kind of circulating within the student cohort at a given moment. And all of the reports of the committee are fed up the chain to the kind of higher management committee. So it's taken very seriously as a sort of a, a way of, uh, of taking the pulse uh, of, uh, of our students and finding out what they want and what they need from us. There's also peer learning and mentoring opportunities to allow you to kind of use one another as a kind of resource. So as a first year, you can be paired with a third or a, a second year in order to, to sort of uh, gain that extra level of guidance that only uh, a fellow student can really give you. And there's also the sort of university wide student support service, which is uh, very useful for a, a very kind of uh, broad portfolio of, uh, of, of different needs. Okay, just a quick kind of overview here, because I appreciate I'm kind of stretching the time now, uh, of different grad, uh, destinations that our graduates have taken. Again, you can see that because um, English uh, provides a, a, a wide range of uh, sort of soft skills, it allows students to kind of insert themselves into a very broad range of different kind of walks of life and different careers, ranging from broadcasting to uh, PR and marketing, advertising, publishing, teaching, um, journalism, the creative arts, again, a real kind of wide range of different areas. And again, that's a real reflection of the fact that uh, that employability is kind of rooted very deeply at the heart of the degree that we offer. Um, and again, on that subject of employability, I mentioned the career development is embedded in the degree. There's the opportunity to take those uh, second year modules, which allow you to explore publishing and teaching and give you that kind of real world experience of those areas. There's also the opportunity to take uh, the Leicester Award and the Leicester Award Gold as you go through the degree. Again, these are specifically designed to help polish your CV and present yourself effectively to employers. And of course, then there's the fact that English itself is a very kind of marketable set of skills. You know, it's all about communication, conveying complex information accessibly. It's all about research, it's all about piecing together data, managing your time, formulating projects. All of these are intensely marketable skills and are valued by uh, potential employers. OK, well, finally, then I'm just going to spend the last couple of minutes talking about applying to Leicester. So there's a review again of the degrees that we offer. So uh, the BA in English, the BA English in American Studies, BA English in History and BA English with Creative Writing. The only difference being the kind of uh, proportions at which you study the two different disciplines. Typical offers are AAB or ABB um, or BBB with an EPQ, if that applies to anyone. But we also take um, uh, IB and access to HE all perfectly acceptable again there's a link there if you want to uh, find out uh, sort of how your qualifications fit our entry requirements so I'm just going to recap before uh, I close down so again why Leicester it's worth well I'll boil it down to three basic points again. So the coverage of the degree, the fact that it's a degree that allows you to kind of explore so widely over the entire territory of English, the support that Leicester fosters, the fact that we're an approachable, uh, friendly department, don't take my word for it, that's what the NSS results have said, um, 
that we really work hard to make sure that students feel comfortable and confident throughout their, their time with us. And the fact that it's a degree with so much choice, there's a degree you can really kind of um, twist around to fit what you want to study at every moment. I've put there um, another sort of email address. If you do uh, want to get in touch with any questions, then please do uh, feel free to drop me a line there and I'll do my best to help you out. That's both the general kind of admissions email and my own email again. Uh, and again, feel free to make use of either of those if there's uh, anything you want to know about. Well, I hope that was useful and I shall sign off there. Thank you very much for listening.